Slow gospel music does not own the rights to the songs played. This is for ministry purposes only, not for profit and is in accordance with fair use. The music on this program is credited to the owners and various companies.
It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau.
It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau. It's slow gospel music. It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau. It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God. It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau. Is it a dress like heaven? When you walk into the room, there's not a thing that's hidden. When every eye is on you, can't get enough of your Just like, just like heaven It 
It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau. It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau. And good evening to one and all. It's good to be with you tonight. I'm happy to be with you. I do apologize for not being with you last evening. I was still recovering. I wasn't too well for the last few days, but I'm happy to be with you tonight. I will be sharing the Word of God, and I want you to stay with me. I heard a little glitch at the beginning of the program, but uh, that has been sorted out. It all started Sunday night when I just had to uh, end the music close to midnight. I really, I, I wasn't able to continue. It was very difficult, difficult. So I, I had to close off like that. So for those of you who were waiting for me to close off, uh, that's the reason why. 
and I, well, Pastor Jane, I know you picked up on that and you called when you did not hear me close off because you know I'm accustomed to closing off. And so I want to say too much tonight, but I want to thank all those uh, for texting last night when I was not on and to the few people who who uh, was aware, thank you so much. God bless you, Richly, and thanks for praying as well. Thank you so much. Uh, a number of people texted last night, but I, I really needed to shut things off totally. And I tell you, this body, we need to get sufficient rest in order to continue and to fulfill God's purpose in the earth. But it's good to be with you tonight. I am going to be sharing the word in just under two minutes or so. Please stay with me and I won't call names tonight because on a Wednesday I don't do greetings. That's because of time. Okay, so tomorrow night, God's willing. Tomorrow night, I'll do all the greetings I need to do, God's willing. So let's pray one for another. Let us pray one for another in all that we do. So if you can, share the link with your family and friends. We are broadcasting on uh, Voscast and also on YouTube. If you want to hear, uh, you want someone to hear the word of God tonight, they are going through a storm. They are going through a difficult storm and they need to hear a word to come through the storm. You need to share this link with them tonight. So I'm going to give you a minute to do that and uh, tell them to tune in uh, so they can receive, most of all, the Word of God. I'm Lester Suglau. I appreciate every one of you. Please stay with me. messages God in the storm that's my topic God in the storm we've all been there caught in the storm watching the flood waters rise and wondering how we got there where is God in the storm when my arms are weary and my soul is battered when life stole from me and left me breathless where is God where is he in the pain? Where is he in my distress? It's here, my friends. It's here in the midst of the storm when the flood waters are threatening to drown us that we must make a decision. We must decide if we will allow God to use this storm to shape us, to make us, to mold us into what he wants us to be. Or if we will allow it to shatter our faith, if we will allow it to shatter our faith and drive us away from God, in the midst of the heartache, it can be so easy to allow the storm to make us bitter, to let it drive us away from everything God has planned for our lives. Whatever that situation is, God knows and He has purpose in store for your life. When it comes down to making a decision, this is a choice we have to make. It can be a tool for God to refine us, a tool for God to shape us, and one day God will redeem this broken place. Or it can sweep us like a tornado and destroy everything in its path. We must make a decision. He is God in the storm. He is God in the storm. Child of God, 
He is God in the storm. It may feel like you are all alone in this place, like no one cares. You feel like there's a volcano on the inside getting ready to erupt. That's how you feel. You feel like no one is there for you. But I promise you something, even in the storm, even at the darkest moment of your life, when you are hanging on to a thread, He is God in the midst of the storm. He is still God in the midst of the situation. And because He is still God, you cannot be lost to Him. He has you in the palm of His hand. He knows everything about everything. And He knows everything that concerns you. There is nothing He does not know about you. Even in the storm, you are held in the palm of His hand. Even in the storm, you are held in the palm of his hand. What am I saying? He saw this storm before it ever reached you and has already worked it out. He has worked out the provision you need to get through this. He has worked it out and you will be able to get to the other side because he will see you through. You are his child and nothing can snatch you from the palm of his hand. God is worthy of your trust. So instead of placing your trust and confidence in others, hoping that they will not fail you. It's important to place your trust in Almighty God. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but I will trust in the name of the Lord. We will trust in the name of the Lord, for the name of the Lord is His strong tower. It may feel impossible to trust God when you are in the midst of the storm, but He knew that storm was coming. He knew you will face that difficult time. But what you need to understand is as much as the storm is difficult, it's only going to last for a season. It's only going to last for a season. It's only going to last for a season. It's not going to last forever. It's not going to last forever. We need to understand that God is looking for eagle Christians. These are the ones who can soar above the storms of life. Storms are something we face every day. That's correct. We face storms sometimes on every side. Listen carefully. God knows everything about everything. Storms put a demand upon believers, followers of Christ, to learn how to rise above them victoriously. God wants to make us into something wonderful. We need to be like eagles to rise above the storms. The Bible has much to say about eagles as an example of how to overcome. The strong winds that we face of affliction that may blow our way. There were 32 references to eagles in the Bible. Eagles are unique among birds. They are born to soar higher and faster than any other bird. Some have been known to even reach heights of 18,000 feet. That's, that's high. That's high. Indeed, they soar above storms. We need to understand that believers, followers of Christ, are also meant to live in the heights of Almighty God. That's what we need to understand. God has something for us, and the Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Sometimes we can be directly in the middle of a storm, yet have joy, yet know the presence of God is with us. The Apostle Paul, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, relates that our position in Christ is to sit with Him in heavenly places at the right hand of God. That is a position high above all evil forces, the place where we can see things from God's perspective, not just from man's perspective. It is a place where we can tap into God's supernatural. Jesus said we are to pray in this manner, Father, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Therefore, the supernatural becomes natural in heaven. That's correct. You see, God doesn't only want to give us joy in the hereafter. He wants to give us joy here and after. 
Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yes, at times we do become discouraged. We do become discouraged at times. Sometimes we look left, sometimes we look right, and there is no one there. No matter what, it's important to encourage ourselves in the Lord. If ever we needed to be pressing into a place of intimacy with Christ, waiting on Him, it is now. We are going to need Him to get us through the storms of life. We must learn to lean on Him for direction, for protection, and for provision. Under pressure, we need to hear His voice, to be in the right place, at the right time. Listen, your present position is not your final destination. It's not. It might be good for a season, but it's not your final destination. That is why it's important to be in a place of intimacy with God. You see, a place of intimacy with God is a place of powerful revelation. It is a place of direction. These times demand that we remove the spiritual wax, spiritual wax from our ears to hear his voice clearly, to hear his voice clearly. We need to understand that. Let's not follow Jesus from a distance. No, no, no. Let us not follow Jesus from a distance, satisfied with just a mere Sunday experience. Thank God for the Sunday experience, but it's more than that. When the storms come and they seem to be on the horizon, we need Jesus more than ever. He is able to lift us as eagles, to rise above our storms if we are pressing into Him. We must be pressing into Him. Eagles, like most animals, know what to do, where to go, and when to do so. That's because God placed a built-in guidance system. He placed a built-in guidance system in the eagle we call instinct. We call it instinct. On the other hand, the believer's internal navigation system is the Holy Spirit. That's the believer's internal navigation system. He is our tour guide, the Holy Spirit. He will lead us in life. He will lead us to all truth. He will lead us through the storm. And I tell you, Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 16, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Child of God, the Holy Spirit is with you. He is with us. And I want you to know that the best antidote for problems and circumstances we face in life is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the best antidote for us. I tell you, we need to trust God and allow the Holy Spirit to influence and keep us in the midst of the storm. You see, if we don't set apart, we can come apart in the midst of the storm. If we don't set apart, we can come apart in the midst of the storm. And when I say set apart, I mean we must set apart for Almighty God. God is looking for some eagle Christians. That's something we need to understand. So we have the Holy Spirit. Another trait of the eagle is feeding early in the morning. That's another trait of the eagle. Feeding early in the morning, it feeds early in the morning. And we too, as believers, must learn to follow that unique quality. Sometimes we are so caught up with the issues of life that we give God the last part of the day rather than seeking Him early. We need to seek Him early. God is looking for an audience of one. Yes, corporate prayer is important. Corporate prayer is great, but God is also looking for fellowship with us on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You see, some people are money chasers. Some people chase after money. You also have woman chasers. Yes, some people are woman chasers. But how many of us are God chasers? How many of us are willing to chase after God? 
God does not want to be tolerated in our lives. He wants to be celebrated. God does not want to be tol uh, tolerated in our lives. He wants to be celebrated. How many of us are willing to pursue God even under pressure? Even under pressure, sometimes it's easy to live for God and trust Him when all is going well. But I must say that it's not so easy to do so when the weight of the world is upon our shoulders. Sometimes we as Christians bail out on God. Yes, sometimes we as Christians bail out on God. As soon as the storm gets rough, we bail out on God. Jesus never said it would be an easy road to travel. They that wait upon the Lord, you need to wait on God, and your strength will be renewed. You will mount up with wings as eagles. I want you to understand that if your life is in the middle of turmoil and the waves of temptation are about to swamp you down, I want you to look up. I want you to put your trust in God. You see, that is the moment God is really putting your faith to the test. That is the moment that your faith in God will be strengthened. I want you to understand that. Elastic is only effective when it is stretched. I don't think you will put on a track pants with the elastic on it slack and step out of the house. I don't think you will do that. I think the elastic has to be stretched in order for that pants to stay on your waist. In order for you to put on that pants, that elastic must be effective on your waist. And that's how the pants will work on you. In other words, for God to shape us, to make us, to mold us, to work in us, we must be stretched at times. There are times where God will stretch us in order to make us and mold us into what He wants us to be. Your setback could very well be a setup for God to elevate your spiritual life. He is the God of your storm. He is the God in your storm. That's the God we serve. Look at Joseph. Joseph was in a storm. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 39 verses 20 and 21, But while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him and showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. I don't know what your situation is tonight. I don't know where you are in your storm. I don't know what your dilemma is. But what I know is that there is a great deliverer in the midst of your dilemma. His name is Jesus Christ. The Lord is able to show up and show off in your situation when you put him first. When you allow him to steer your course. Allow him to steer. Let him steer your course. Allow him to be the captain of your ship. He is able to show you favor in the eyes of others, in the midst of your enemies. God is still able to raise you up. He is still able to prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. Why? Because he wants your enemies to see his goodness upon your life. So you will call them from the east, the west, the north and the south. Call your enemies because God wants to show up and show off his presence in your your life when they look at you they will know it had to be the goodness of God they will know it had to be God's hand upon your life and so Joseph was in a situation but God showed him favor Joseph is a biblical example of someone who found the favor of God in the midst of adversity he was sold into slavery in Egypt he was mistreated and taken advantage of but no matter what other people did to him. The Bible repeatedly says that the favor of God was upon Joseph. Even when he was unjustly accused 
of rape. You remember that? When he was unjustly accused of rape and he was thrown into prison, he continued to move forward. Yes, some people may try to come against you in different ways. The favor of God will eventually cause you to rise above the storm. And I tell you, Joseph's case was a situation where the favor of God eventually caused him to be released and he was put in charge of all Egypt's agricultural affairs. The favor of God came in the midst of trial, in the midst of life challenges when somebody is mistreating you or maybe your whole world is falling apart. Know that God's favor is still able to show up and show off in your life because we too were created to overcome the storms of life. That's correct. And that's why we need to do exactly what God will have us to do. You see, the tragedy is many Christians do not apply the word of God in the storm. It's important to know that God watches over His word to perform it. He is not obligated to perform your word. He is not obligated to perform Lester's word. He is not obligated to perform my word. Indeed, He is obligated to perform His word. He declares His word above His name. Therefore, if His name cannot change, His word definitely cannot change. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It is God who works in us both to will and to do his good pleasure. I want you to understand that. His good pleasure. He is El Olam, eternal God. He is El Elyon, the most high God. He is Jehovah Megadesh, the one who sanctifies. He is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my banner. He is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. In the book of Daniel, the Lord is the fourth man in the fiery furnace. God is able to come into your fire fiery furnace, your fiery situation, directly in the midst of it and deliver you. In the book of Numbers, he is a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. In the book of Revelation, he is the coming king. He is a righteous God. He is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He always was, he always is, and he always will be. He is unmoved, he is undefeated, he is unchanged, and he is never undone because he is God. He is God. I want you to rise like never before in Christ in order for God to arrive at the product. He must take us through the process. In order for God to arrive at the product, he must take us through the process. You know, life is really funny. Life is funny. You see, when you don't go through the process, you never learn the lesson. And if you don't learn the lesson, you will never survive the test. Let me repeat that for you. When you don't go through the process, you never learn the lesson. And if you don't learn the lesson, you will never survive the test. Others survived the test because they learned the lessons necessary. That's what I want you to understand. If possible, take a note of this. Malachi chapter 3 verse 3. Malachi chapter 3 verse 3. It says, He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. One day a woman decided to find out about the process of refining silver, so she called a silversmith and made an appointment to watch him at work. As she watched the silversmith, he held a piece of silver over the fire and let it heat up. He explained that in refining silver, one needed to hold the silver in the middle of the fire where the flames were hottest in order to burn away all of the impurities. The woman thought about God holding us in such a hot spot. Then she thought again about the verse that says, He sits 
as a refiner and purifier of silver. So she asked the silversmith if it was true that he had to sit there in front of the fire the whole time the silver was being refined. The man said yes, he not only had to sit there holding the silver, but he had to keep his eyes on the silver the whole time it was in the fire. He had to keep his eyes on it the whole time it was in the fire. If the silver was left a moment too long in the flame, it would be destroyed. It would be destroyed. The woman was silent for a moment. She got silent. Then she asked the silversmith, How do you know when the silver is fully refined? How do you know when the silver is fully refined? He smiled at her and answered, Oh, that's easy. When I see my image in it, when I see my image in it, today if you are feeling the heat of the fire, today if you feel the heat in the midst of the storm, remember that God has his eye on you and he will keep watching until he sees his image in you. Listen, he wants to see his image in you. God doesn't need what you have lost. He needs what you have left. He does not need what you have lost. He needs what you have left. He will turn your pain into purpose. He will turn your nightmare into a dream. But you must allow God to take charge of your life. You must allow Him to be in charge. Give Him your whole heart to work with and he will do something wonderful in you. One thing you must remember is when you are going to another level, the enemy will try to keep you down. He will try to destroy your life. You know, the only bird that dares to pick the eagle is the crow. You know the crow? That's a bird as well. It sits on the back and bites the eagle's neck. However, the eagle doesn't respond, nor does it fight with the crow. It doesn't waste any time or effort on it. It just opens its wings and begins to climb up the highest place in the sky. The higher the flight, the harder it is for the crow to breathe, and then the crow falls due to a lack of oxygen. The crow will eventually fall off because of a lack of oxygen. What am I saying? You need to also not waste time with crows, with those who come to destroy you, with dangerous people who only approach your life to try to destabilize what God is doing in your life in the midst of the storm. Know that God will still take you to a higher place. In the midst of the storm, know that God will cause some people that are trying to keep you on to just disappear because God is elevating your spiritual life. Don't you ever forget that. And so I want you to understand, it's very, very important. It's important to look to the Word of God. You need to get into prayer, get into scripture verses, meditate on these verses. If you have a pen, take this information, because God is going to do something in the midst of your storm. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 It says, When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. Psalm 37 verse 5 Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him and He will act. God will act on your behalf. And one more, Isaiah 66, verse 9. Isaiah 66, verse 9. I will not cause pain without allowing something new to be born, says the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future, plans to give you an expected end, the Bible says, Child of God, know that He is the God of your storm. 
am letzten Zyklau. It is slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau. And uh, if you received the word of God, if you received the word of God, just send me a little text on the live chart. If you can just do that. I want to know that you received the word of God. If you received, just uh, go to the live chart and send me a little text. Most of all, I want to know that you received. So, if you did, oh, and by the way, as I, I started saying recently, you can also like, that's the little thumbs up the little thumbs up you can like what you hear if you you like what you hear whenever we are on if you like what you are listening to tonight just uh, tap on the little like button that's the thumbs up and uh, Dr. Jane Sideno Gilbert of Faith Life Ministries will be on next week Wednesday Dr. Jane Sideno Gilbert, so you can look out for her. If you received, please send me a text and uh, you can let me know. Yeah? The most important thing is that you received the Word of God. This will stay up on YouTube and uh, you can share with your family and friends. Please stay with me, listen to the words of the song, just send me a little text, let me know that you received, if you did, okay? Some people may text on WhatsApp and that is okay. I don't wanna move from this we are also broadcasting on Voscast.
It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau.
want to thank you all for responding tonight to the word of course thank you so much the lord bless each and every one of you and again i do apologize for not being on last night i know many people look out for worship and bible quiz on a tuesday god's willing next week tuesday we'll be back with bible quiz and worship and bible quiz tomorrow night it's worship and your turn your turn to encourage your turn to uplift that's tomorrow night 9 30 p.m to 11 30 and next week wednesday dr james indiano gilbert will be sharing the word of god that is next week wednesday you are listening tonight and i want to encourage you show love to one another we are the only bible some people will ever read we are the only bible some people will ever read we can prophesy we can heal the sick we can speak in tongues all these things if we have not love we are like a clanging symbol the bible says yeah so please let's make a difference let's make a difference maybe you were listening tonight and you don't know jesus as savior look around and see what is happening in the world look around people one of the things i need to tell you immediately before i close off is there is a lot of deception taking place in the last days jesus warned us about that in matthew and there are other parts of the bible where you will find that word deception please don't be deceived it's important to know jesus on a one-on-one -on -one basis when you are saved that's good you have everlasting life but then you need now after you get saved you need to be in the house of the lord you need to be receiving the word of god you need to be connected to people who will help you and teach you and show you and enlighten you but it's important for you to look to the lord for his spirit to also guide you and lead you jesus said before he ascended and i pray I pray to God that he will send another comforter that he may, he may abide with you forever, forever. So Jesus did not leave us undone. He says that he will abide with us forever. Forever means forever. So most of all, know the voice of God. Know the voice of God. That's important. It's important to know the voice of God for yourself. It's important to know the voice of God for yourself. In other words, that one-on-one -on -one with God, that personal time fellowshipping with God, that's good. Prayer rallies are good. Conferences are good. When the nation uh, come together to pray, that's good. But at the end of the day, your one-on-one -on -one with God is most important. That is the most important thing. Yes? that relationship and fellowship you have with God. When you receive Christ as Savior, you have relationship. But how you build fellowship is when you get to know Him more and more. Fellowship. And so to get to know Him more and more, you spend time with God. You spend time with God. When you meet a young man or a young lady or you meet someone and maybe you, you, maybe you are interested or you you are fond of the person and you you want to know more about the person what do you do you spend time you try to connect because you want to learn more about that person if you want to learn more about god you want to learn more about god you need to spend time in his word spend time in his word why his word god and his word are one God and His Word are one. Yes? So when you go to the Word of God, you are going to God. When you go to the Word of God, you are going to God. So listen carefully. Don't be deceived. Please, please people, please listen to my voice. Don't be deceived. Don't, please, 
In order for you not to be deceived, you must know the word of God. That's important. Thank God for good shepherds. Thank God for good pastors. I am telling you, you and God building that one-on-one, -on -one, building fellowship with God, is very important. Very important. So build your fellowship with God. Yeah? I'm Lester Suglal. If you don't know Jesus personally, if you don't know Jesus, then I want you to make a decision now. I want you to make a decision to serve Jesus in spirit and in truth. That's what I want you to do. I want you to make a decision to serve Jesus in spirit and in truth. That's what I want you to do. If you don't know Jesus as Savior, if you don't know Jesus as Savior, then I want you to make a decision now. That's what I want you to do. If you don't know Jesus personally, I want you to make a decision. Make a decision tonight to serve Him in spirit and in truth. Jesus is the only hope for this world. Jesus is the only answer for this world. I'm telling you, it's not the one world government. No, it's not WEF, uh, w, world e, WEF, which is World Economic Forum. Jesus is the only hope for this world. There is no other solution. Governments are crumbling all over the world. Not just in one country or two countries, but all over the world. Nations are in crisis. And I'm telling you, the answer is Jesus. The answer is to submit your life to God. Let me tell you why there is no peace. Let me tell you why there is no peace today. There is no peace in the world because there is no peace in nations there is no peace in nations because there is no peace in communities there is no peace in communities because there is no peace in the home there is no peace in the home because there is no peace in the heart of man and that is the problem there is no peace in the heart of man that is the real issue the real issue is the heart of man the problem of the heart is really the heart of the problem and that is the real issue only jesus can clean you up no clorox no detergent no vim no soap no chemical only the blood of jesus can wash you and cleanse you and make you whole will you come to jesus tonight look around and see what is happening in the world people are being caught up as i said before you have all kinds of chasers in this world yeah you have what you call money chasers. Some people chase after money, money, money. You have woman chasers. Some people chase after woman, they chase after woman. The hurricane season will start just now. And you also have storms that will be coming. Well, you have storm chasers as well. Some people chase after storms. You ever saw them? But how many of us will say, I want to be a God chaser. How many will say, I want to chase after God? He said, if you seek me, you shall find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. That is what the Bible says in Jeremiah 29. That's what the Bible says. He shall seek me and find me when he shall search for me with all your heart. Come to Jesus tonight. Say this prayer. Say, Dear Jesus, I come before you now asking you to forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I know that you died for me to add value to me. Jesus, come live in me as I live for you from this day on. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. If you said this prayer, all of heaven is rejoicing now. Maybe you are a backslider. You've drifted away. Why not come back to the Lord? Say, dear Jesus, I come before you now. I've drifted away, just like the prodigal son. But Jesus, I've come to the end of myself. 
and like the prodigal son, I will arise and return to you. Say, dear Jesus, I've drifted away. I went my own way. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to restore my life. As I live for you again, Jesus, in your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. If you accepted Jesus as Savior, you rededicated your heart to the Lord, or find yourselves in a Bible-believing church that preaches and teaches the incorruptible Word of God. If you cannot afford a Bible, call me in the week on 776 4044. That number is 776 4044. And uh, if you have, it's WhatsApp as well. It's WhatsApp. And if you're outside of Trinidad and Tobago, it's 1 768 776 4044. And uh, this program will stay up on YouTube so you can go back and listen if you so desire. Or you can uh, share with your family and friends the God of the Storms. And tomorrow night, of course, it's Worship and it's Your Turn segment where you, the Slow Gospel family and listeners, get an opportunity to encourage others. So if God has laid something upon your heart, don't keep it. There is a reason why God wants you to share it. So tomorrow night, you will have that platform to do that. Yeah? just going to leave you with this. I shared this some time ago and I just want to share this again. I shared this at a service I went to and I had to do a, a Thanksgiving service for Pastor Clifford Nicholas on Sunday. That was on Resurrection Sunday and I, I, I was sharing with the people about uh, this story. It's a story, a little story about this police officer who was patrolling on the night shift in a town somewhere in northern Great Britain. And while patrolling, he heard a quivering sound. He heard a quivering sound. And there he saw a little boy in the shadows sitting on a doorstep with tears rolling down his cheeks, tears rolling down his face. The child said, I'm lost. Please take me home. The police began naming street after street, trying to help the boy find where he lived. The officer named the shops and the hotels in the area, but all without success. Then he remembered, in the center of the town was a church with a large cross above the surrounding city. The policeman pointed at, at it and said, do you live anywhere near that? Do you live anywhere near that? And the boy's face immediately got bright. He said, yes, sir, yes. Take me to the cross. I can find my way home from there. I say to you tonight, if you come to the cross, there is a way. If you come to the cross, there is a way. If you are lost, the only way home is to come to the cross. The cross of Christ directs people, lost people, to their eternal home. Jesus did not uh, stay on that cross. Jesus didn't stay on a cross. He rose from the dead. God raised him from the dead. So I'm not speaking about a dead Christ. I'm speaking to you about a living Savior, the Lamb that was slain before the very foundation of, foundation of the world. And he is coming again. That's what the Bible says. So trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Amen. Jesus is coming again. And as the word says in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. For where I am, there 
he may be also amen so lord the lord bless you all don't forget dr jane will be on next week wednesday every wednesday we feed your various pastors and ministers here on slow gospel music i'm lester sukla saying i love you all thank you so much god bless you and again i apologize for not being with you last night but i'll be with you tomorrow night god's willing and continue to show love one to another and remember god loves you god is voting for you satan is voting against you but your vote makes the difference choose jesus christ and don't let go i leave you with this one such an awesome god love you all have a great great night lester sugler saying bye bye and i do apologize for the late start tonight god is good tomorrow night 9 30 p.m and i'll send all the greetings i need to send tomorrow night lester sugler saying bye bye the sun to rise and you lay it down to rest and you hold this heart of mine you hold my every breath you're such an He's seated in majesty, reigning in holiness. The table is spread for me, for you are the living bread. You're such an So